Ready for you start praying and after five minutes they are checking the time that <laughs> it's just five minutes. Am I not praying for to thirty minutes? What's going on? Eh, beg, beg, beg. Attend a local church. Disciples. Disciples. <laughs> but as you see that someone is praying beside you, you drop your phone. You you start praying. You start just like, what's all this? I want to read my Bible. You won't give people out of what you don't have. It's not helping your spiritual life. <laughs> Please attend Grace Bean Christian Center. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Ifeolua Oni, aka Ifeolua the YouTuber. In case you do not know, you're welcome to my channel if you're seeing my face for the first time. And to my OG subscribers, to my returning subscribers, and you loyal gang, you're welcome back. Yo, let's start doing something. Let's start doing present and absent. So if you are if you are here now, I know you subscribe. I just put it in the comment section. Say present, present, present. I'm here. I'm around. I'm available. Do that right now. <laughs> okay, guys. So by the title, by the thumbnail, you already know what we're talking about today. Today, I'm just going to be sharing some tips that I know that can help you to build your relationship. Oh God, relationship in my head. But tips that I know that can help you to grow your spiritual life. So yeah, I know that why I'm doing this video is because I know that at some point, at one point or the other, it's normal, it's possible for you to struggle with growing spiritually. It's very possible. I struggled with it at a point and I even have a video on that. So I'll link it in the description box in case you want to check that video before checking this one. But I know very well that it is possible to struggle with growing spiritually. And at that point when I was when I was struggling, I was also struggling with opening up. So I was I did, I wasn't growing as I was supposed to, but I couldn't open up. So I feel like this kind of video will help someone who is like that, who cannot open up and who is also struggling. Even though I would advise you to open up because that's like the best thing to do. But then it will help you. At least this video is telling you to do it now, do you guys? So yeah. I don't want to talk too much in this video. I'm just going to be talking about how to grow your spiritual life, how to grow spiritually, tips that can help you to grow spiritually. And in case you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to my channel. Please, 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 thank you very much. Give this video a thumbs up. Like, don't forget, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave comments, ask questions, comment about whatever I say. Just let me know that you are here. Please just leave comments in the comment section. Thank you very much. And share with your friends. Let it help them share on whatever faith-based group you are on. Do you get? So yes. And without further ado, let's jump right. Let's jump right. Eh, eh, eh. So one thing I wrote in my book is that salvation is a means to an end. It's not an end in itself. So after salvation, there's something that comes after it. Like after salvation comes something. After salvation, there is a life. Yeah, there's a life, there's growth that needs to take place. And that growth, there are several things that can help you to grow. So which are which are the things we are going to be talking about in today's video? Even the Bible says that all men come that all men are saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So after salvation, there is something that comes up after. Do you understand? So and the first tip I wrote is studying the Bible. I'm sure we all know that to grow spiritually, you have to study and study the Bible. So what I know will say, Kagba Dua. Those are the only things that like we really have. Do you get prayer and study? So, I know some people say yes, we know we want to study the Bible and stuff, but cooking it does not, it just does not work. And I know because I've been there. I remember those days when I pick up my Bible, I want to study Bible and I'm falling asleep. I'm dozing off. I'm sleeping and it's just like, what's all this? I want to read my Bible, but what's all this? I get it. Well, so that's why somebody I know advised me at that point to do it bit by bit, to take it topic after topic. So in case you are just starting out and it's big and it's proving to be difficult, so you can pick it, you can decide to study on the life of somebody for the next one month or for the next two months. I'm going to study on this person's life. Do you understand? You start from somewhere. You can't just jump on it and then you just start studying your Bible for two hours or for three hours in a day. It starts somewhere. You can start by studying a chapter of the Bible per day. You can start by studying the life of someone per month. So you can say, okay, for this month, I'm going to study on Thanksgiving. For this month, I'm going to study on prayer. For this month, I'm going to study on giving. You know, things like that. For this month, I'm going to study on the life of Jesus. I'm going to study on Paul. I'm going to just pick it one after the other. You don't have to like just say, okay, I want to do it the way this person is doing it or the way my pastor starts small small and i feel like that will help you because you are doing 
you are studying studying as a whole like you're not just reading it as you're not just picking a verse or a book or a chapter any day how it comes you understand and there are devotionals that can help there is you but you version you can use start with open heavens you know there are different devo devotionals that you can use and oh you version even makes it easy they have those study they have the study on giving they have study on this they have study on that you just go and pick the one you want and you pick it for how many days you want to do it do you get it will help you so the second tip I'm going to be talking about is prayer. I'm sure we already guessed that prayer was going to be the next thing I'll talk about. And that's because it's very important. It bears conviction. It helps our spirit, man. You know, it, it, even faith, it helps with our faith. It helps with the growing of our faith. The study of the world also helps with it. But how then can you pray? Because I know people, there are people that find it hard to pray. You find it hard to pray for 20 minutes. You pray for... You already pray. You start praying. And after 5 minutes, you are checking the time that... <laughs> It's just five minutes. I might not pray for to 30 minutes. What's going on? I, I get it. And so what's the this things that I've learned recently is that you don't have to like fix a particular time to pray. You don't have to say, oh, I must pray this, 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 or this is, it is at this so, so, so time of the day that I must pray. And so when you don't wake up to pray, it has gone. The Bible says pray without ceasing, which means it's possible to pray always. So you can pray while you are eating. You want to eat your food, you are praying. While you are waiting for it to cool down, you are praying. While you are cooking in the kitchen, you are praying. While you are walking on the road, you are praying. Do you get? While you are lying down on the, on the bed, you are praying. You want to go and get something from that shop. You pray in the Holy Ghost. No, those little, little times actually count. Because there are even times where there is no time. There are days, there are periods where you won't have time. There are periods where you won't be able to sit and pray for one hour and pray for two hours straight. Praying at every point you get, praying at every opportunity you get is key. And so for even you that is starting out and for you that is finding it difficult to pray for 30 minutes, you find pastor is always saying, pray for 30 minutes, pray for one hour, pray for this. And you're like, but I don't know how to. I can't sit at once and pray for 30 minutes. I can't sit at once and pray for one hour. It's that small. You, you don't have to jump on it. It's that small. You can start by praying 10 minutes every 2 hours. You can start by praying 15 minutes every 2 hours. After that, you upgrade. Praying 20 minutes every 2 hours. Do you get this? They, I heard of someone who used to pray 10 minutes every 1 hour. And you find out that at the end, he has prayed like almost 6 hours in that day. Do you understand? So you can do something like that. Pray in tongues 10 minutes every hour. Pray in tongues 10 minutes every 2 hours. You can set alarms on your phone that, okay. 10 o'clock, I pray for 10 minutes, or I pray for 15 minutes. By 12, I pray again. By 2, I pray again. I don't have to, you don't have to like sit and pray for one hour. It starts little by little. And I feel like that really helps a lot. I've been doing that a lot just to help me with the praying without season. You pray every time. I want to go and get water and pray. I'm just going to do something and pray. I'm on my bed using my phone, pressing my phone and praying. You know, stuff like that. It helps. It helps you little by little you grow and you just find yourself that you can go two hours straight you can go three hours straight it starts small those people that can pray 24 hours straight do not start with 24 hours do you understand just little by little so the next thing i wrote is the meditation on god's word you know this particular thing here there are several times I've watched the videos of growing spiritually or listening to sermons and I'm here meditate on the word of God, meditate. And I'm like, what exactly is meditating on the word of God? Like, what exactly is it? I, because I just hear meditate on the word of God, meditate on the word of God. I'm like, what is it? And so in case you are just like me or you, you are like, how oh, I used to be in the past. I, what I will say about meditation is after studying the word of God, you take time to ponder on it. You take time to sit and think about the word of God you have heard. So, okay, I read that um, the whole men are saved and come to knowledge of God's word or come to knowledge of the truth. And I'm like, okay, what is that? So you sit down, you allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. You sit down, you take time. Don't just read the Bible, close it, and you're up, and you're up. You're just going. Well, if you don't have time and you close the Bible and okay, maybe you have to go to work or to go to class or to go to school. On your way to class, on your way to school, you can take time to listen, to take time to think about what you have heard. Ask the Holy Spirit, okay, what does this particular verse mean? Do you get? That's how the Bible you have studied begins to stay in your heart because when you just read the bible and you go when they ask you what did you read today you're like yes i read my bible today then i ask you yeah tell me what did you read today and you're like um i read first Corinthians chapter 14 okay what does this say and you're like um i really can't remember 
so to save you from all that when you study the bible take time to think about what you have studied think about it what was that particular verse or those verses that stood out to you think about it sit down ponder on those things you get he will help you that's what i see as meditation on the word of god so the next tip i wrote which is the fourth tip is to attend the local church and not just any church okay I have to be careful what I want to say now. But attend a local church, attend a Bible teaching church. See, a place where you are and you are not going spiritually, you should not be there. Because what's the essence of going over and over again and it's not helping your spiritual life? <laughs> I just see shows. <laughs> Can you close? Get out, please. Don't. <laughs> I'm shooting a video. I know, I can't quite stop you. Is it? It's a thing. So, as I was saying, as I was saying, I tend to love you. Okay, so as I was saying, I tend to have a local church that you attend, a Bible teaching church, not just mm. any, a place where you will grow spiritually, where they will teach you the word of God and you will grow. And they will teach with simplicity. If you're in if you're please attend Grace Spring Christian Center. <laughs> so attend the local church is going to help you. Don't be the person that will change church every Sunday. That this Sunday you go to this church, next Sunday you go to another church, next week Sunday you find another compacted. church. At the, at the local church that you can sit down and learn the word of God and the way you are accountable to do you understand at the local church it will really help your spiritual life a bible teaching church a church where you will pray Why so and serious? you will learn the word of, and you will learn the word of God the next tip I wrote is to surround yourself with like minds <laughs> have friends that are like you have friends like Clary <laughs> Have friends that will help your spiritual life, supernatural friends, not just friends that you go to class, you come back, you gist about something. Have friends that will ginger you, that will push you to study the word of God, that will push you to pray. That just when you wake up and you just see the person praying, you to your ginger to pray. Let me tell you how it happens in my room, man. Eh? So when you wake up in the morning, it, it could be anybody. When you wake up in the morning, you see Clive, Clive is already praying on the bed. You, you might, you might have wanted to carry your phone before. But as you see that someone is praying beside you, you drop your phone. You, too, you start praying, you start praying. The third person, I know to wake up, see that, ah, these two people are praying. Instead of her to do whatever she wants to do, she'll pray. So do you understand? And that's what happens in my room. You wake up, you just see somebody praying. And even if you were not planning to pray before, you start praying. So surround yourself with like minds, with people that will help you. That When you say you're not going to church, they will look at you like this. Alpha guy. She, you understand? She... Say you're yeah, alright. You're not going to church. You'll be like, my friend, stand up and wear your clothes. You know, something like that. Just surround yourself with people that will help you. Help your prayer life. Help your study life. I tell you, when I was in part one, I was not and I was not staying with my friends or staying with people that, you know, I was staying with my sister. My sister was not in the room. She's like she could go one week and not come back and it would just be me. Do you understand? So it wasn't part two. So it wasn't like it's not the same as I am now. Do you understand? So surround yourself with like minds, with people that will help you to grow, that will push you. you it just still butters my like, point. I have a friend like Clary. Girl. I have a friend like Ifeetu. <laughs> yes. I have a friend like Anu too. Yeah. Do you understand? So like Jojo. Yes. Ah uh ah. -uh. Woman of God. <laughs> <laughs> just have friends that will that will ginger you and that will push you to grow. So the next thing I wrote is to give yourself to discipleship or to mentorship. So apart from having friends that will help you, you also have somebody that has been that that has grown, like that has grown, that is ahead of you. Let me put it like that. Someone that is ahead of you and that you can be accountable to. That so someone that will ask you and that you cannot lie to. Someone that sees you, like just somebody that you can be accountable to. That even when you find out that maybe you are not doing some things the way you should be doing, someone that will bring you back to other. You understand? Just have a disciple in your local church. You can just look for someone that that okay, this person is up there, or just just look for someone that you know that has gone way ahead, and then pray about it because there are several people that would have gone way ahead. But just pray about it so that your Holy Spirit leads you to a particular person that can help you. Do you understand? Give yourself to discipleship. Give yourself to mentorship. So my serious. life has not my life has not been the same since I started having disciples. Do you understand? Disciples. Disciples. 
Decide plus, please. And that thing I wrote is that is to listen to messages, to listen to Christian songs. They also help. So, like I said, you might not have time to sit down and listen to messages over and over again. But as you are walking on the road, you can plug your ears and listen to messages. As we are cooking, I'm using my house again as example. As we are cooking, putting food on fire, one message is playing. As we are taking our bed, Christian song is playing. Just you might not be able to sit down and and listen to the message, plug your ears and sit down two hours or sit down one hour something and give yourself to listening to messages. But as you are doing things, as you are arranging your school bag, as you are going to work, as you are going to school, you can listen to messages. Do you understand? This guy. Why this guy Do you understand? You can listen to messages. You can listen to Christian songs, songs that will help your spirit, man. Do you understand? Not. Uh, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> Songs that will help your spirit, man. You understand what I'm saying? So, yeah. And then the last thing I wrote is that discipling others is also a way to grow. Mm -hmm. Discipling others is also a way to grow. Because when you know that there are people that are looking up to you, you will not want to. You won't want to be like a descal about yourself. You want. You want to be intentional because you know that there are lives that are. And what's the word? Lives are what? You know that there are some lies in your hands. That's yeah, like there, there are people, there are people that are attached to you. There are people looking up to you. That so there are some things you cannot do because of those people. There are some things you will be more intentional about because of those people. So I wrote that discipling others is actually a way to go, but you must have gotten to an extent before you can begin to disciple others because you will not teach people what you don't know. You won't give people out of what you don't have. Do you understand? So I really hope you learned something. I really, really, really hope you learned something in today's video. It's been a while since I did sit down with video and it's been... I just hope you learned. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs, thumbs up. up. Yeah. Leave comments. You can ask questions. And you can also reply the questions of other people in the comment section. I don't have to be the one to reply. So you can ask questions. You can reply questions of people. You can reply the comments of people in the comment section. And please share with your friends. Share to all the faith-based child group pages you are on. Just share, please. Thank you. Help me. Help your girl. So thank you very much for watching. I love you guys so much. Mwah. Bye. You guys, if I say I'm not tired, I'm tired. I need equipment. I'm tired. You know how long I've been here for? Just to set up. I just feel... It's, all, it's too much. It's too much. But since uh, the ginger way person, they look for the five weight person they get. The one little one we don't come now. I don't lose them. It is well. We go again. We keep going. We keep building. Like a wise man will see. <laughs>